All right, welcome to the lunchtime video. Uh, normally these are, uh, these, these have gotten rare and rare, rarer and rarer uh, recently. Um, they used to be very consistent when I was going for my retake, um, but uh, I'm kind of moving in a different direction now. Um, it's just, I've talked about this many times on the channel, uh, whether or not a retake is, um, is the best path forward or not. Um, and, um, you know, aside from what, what my conclusion of that was, which, um, I guess, I guess I still haven't completely found a conclusive answer to that. Um, I'm really enjoying kind of taking this diversion into, uh, or, or, or or, well, actually, I'm not really taking a diversion. I, I, I'm enjoying, I got a, I got a recommendation from a, a, a commenter to continue my series on Python for DevOps. So I, I did that. And in doing that, I, I took a diversion into this Flask by example learning path from real Python. And I'm actually finding this uh, pretty enjoyable. So, so that's um, why I'm doing a, a lunchtime video uh, now uh, to continue uh, with, with this. So hopefully I can finish uh, this, the rest of this, uh, uh, here, it's a diversion from a diversion. Um, I just thought there might be some gaps in my knowledge with Git and GitHub. So I wanted to fill them in by doing this, uh, tutorial from real Python. Uh, unfortunately I really haven't found any big gaps in doing this. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, there are gaps in my knowledge, um, but this uh, tutorial really hasn't filled them in all that much, as far as I understand. Um, and not only that, uh, it, it just seems like I have gaps in my knowledge about this kind of for a reason. Like it doesn't really, there's no gain in really filling uh, a lot of the gaps in my knowledge in. So like this tutorial, I, I'm pretty uh, happy with. It, they give you uh, external links to a whole book on Git that really will fill in every little detail. Um, and then they give you like uh, training exercises and like a visual graphing, uh, kind of a gamified way of learning Git. So I looked at that a little bit in some of these videos and uh, just decided that really uh, a kind of stripped down uh, working functional knowledge of Git is is really all I really need and all I really want at this point. So I've only got two more items left on the table of contents. So I'm going to finish this up. But as far as going into greater depth, doing gamified exercises and, and reading the GitHub book, uh, my main goal is to is to read the Python for DevOps book. And this is just a diversion from that. So we're going to try to get back on track uh, as soon as as possible. So I'm just going to finish this out. Then I'm going to go back to my main diversion, which was going to the real Python tutorial. Um, that's very relevant to this book because this book uh, in chapter 11 walked through that tutorial and then took a, a few uh, offshoots from it. Um, but for me, the offshoots, I, I just kind of had trouble with. And uh, these tutorials are really excellent. This is a really great reputable site. So I just wanted to kind of ignore the book and just and just do the tutorial, which is likely updated and, and more recent than the book. The book, I think, was published in 2019. So the tutorial probably has uh, some updates to it by now. So that's my goal. Uh, after I finished chapter 11, which is just ignore the book, go right to the online tutorial that the book was using. Uh, finish that and then come back to the book for chapter 12. But I took a diversion from that diversion because I wanted to fill in some gaps with, uh, with Git. Um, so uh, let's uh, finish up that diversion by reading about Git fetch. To explain the fetch command clearly and all bring up my lab too. That's one thing I forgot. We need to take a step back and talk about how Git manages the relationship between your local repo and a remote repo. Okay, I've got a... 
This next part is background. While it's not something you'll use on a day-to-day -day basis, it will make the difference between fetch and pull make more sense. And my current understanding of the difference of uh, fetch and pull is basically that you just fetch is evil and you never do fetch. And if it ever asks you to do fetch, you say no. And you always deactivate fetch and, and make sure that fetch basically doesn't exist anymore as a feature in get. Because if you enable fetch and you mess with fetch, it's just going to blow away all your files and you won't know where you are, what to do, or how to get them back. And uh, you'll lose a whole day of work. That's my understanding of fetch. My understanding of full poll is uh, if somebody else made changes, you just uh, type in poll and then you can get the, the changes they made. Um, or if the repo is, is behind what you have in your local files, just hit poll and you can bring it up to date by polling what's in that, that centralized uh, repo. So obviously lots of big gaps in my knowledge. So let's continue uh, reading. When you clone a new repo, Git doesn't just copy down a single version of the files in that project. It copies the entire repository and uses that to create a new repository on your local machine. Git does not make local branches for you except for master. However, it does keep track of the branches that were on the server. To do that, Git creates a set of branches that all start with remotes slash origin slash branch name. Only rarely, almost ever, almost never, will you check out these remotes origin branches, but it's handy to know that they are there. Remember that every branch that existed on the remote when you cloned the repo will have a branch in remotes slash origin. When you create a new branch and the name matches an existing branch on the server, Git will mark you local branch as a tracking branch that is associated with a remote branch. We'll see how that is useful when we get to poll. Now that you know about the remote slash origin branches, understanding git fetch will be pretty easy. All fetch does is update all of the remote slash origin branches. It will only modify the branches stored in the remote slash origin and not any of your local branches. Okay. All right, I don't understand fetch. Um, I think I will still ignore it. Pull, git pull is simply the combination of two other commands. First, it does a git fetch to update the remote slash origin branches. Then if the branch you are on is tracking a remote branch, then it does a git merge of the corresponding remote slash origin branch to your branch. For example, say, sorry, this is this is frustrating me. For example, say you were on the my new feature branch, and your coworker had just added some code to it on the server. If you do a git pull, git will update all of the remote slash origin branches, and then do a git merge remote origin my new feature, which will get the new commit. It onto the branch you're on. There are of course some limitations here. Git won't let you even try to do a git pull if you have modified files on your local system. That can create too much of a mess. If you have commits on your local branch and the remote also has new commits, i.e. the branches have diverged, then the git merge portion of the pull will create a merge commit just as we have discussed above. Those of you who have been reading closely, not me, will see that you can also have Git do a rebase instead of a merge by doing Git pull R. 
Okay, and I don't remember what the difference is between a rebase and a merge. So the reason I said I was getting frustrated by this is because I'm starting more and more to get the sense. And I don't know, maybe it's confirmation bias because I already kind of had this sense to begin with is that a lot of this is kind of like a car where, okay, you can be a mechanic. Great. You can know every aspect of your uh, engine. Great. Um, but if you don't want to work as a mechanic, why would you do that? Like just drive the damn car from point A to point B. And, you know, that's not all there is to a car. Like you, you still got to navigate, use a map. You've got to like, like if you're spending all your time under the hood, you know, you you don't have as much time to drive it. Like it makes sense if you're like a mechanic or something, but for most people who use get like just use the commands your coworker <laughs> gave you in a notepad file and don't worry about it. Like, like this, I'm wondering if almost this was, this was a mistake to kind of uh, take this diversion into filling in my gaps uh, in my knowledge of get, cause it almost seems like at some level, <laughs> like if you fill in your gaps, you're just going to confuse yourself more and, and um, waste a lot of time stuck in the weeds and details uh, when it really doesn't matter to know the the details at all. But I'm going to try to stay optimistic. Uh, let's keep on going. The next one is uh, push. This is a, a command to work with remote repos. As you have probably guessed, Git push is just the opposite of git pull. Well, almost the opposite. Push sends the info about the branch you are pushing and asks the remote if it would like to update its version of that branch to match yours. Generally, this amounts to you pushing your new changes up to the server. There are a lot of details and complexity here involving exactly what a fast forward commit is. There's a fantastic write up here. The gist of it is that git push makes your new commits available on the remote server. Yeah, so as far as I know, as far as I've ever been concerned in my professional experience, all you need to know to do in git is uh, git checkout dash b to create your own branch, uh, git uh, add to make sure that your your working on the, you're actually tracking the files, git commit dash M and you're actually writing good messages and then uh, git push. Like though that's pretty much all you need to know. You also need to know, of course, git clone. And then I would say you, you definitely need to know git uh, pull as well. So you don't need to really know. Yeah, like here, this, this is all, this is it. This is all you need to know about Git. You don't need to know about the history of it. You don't need to know about the other commands it's capable of. You don't need to know um, anything about this. You don't need to know about rebasing. You don't need to know about cherry picking. Uh, in my experience, this is it. This is the extent of what you need to know with Git. And, and spending any further time learning about it is just a waste of time. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this learning about uh, about that. Okay, so putting it all together, simple Git workflow. At this point, we've reviewed several basic Git commands and how you might use them. I'll wrap up with a quick description of a possible workflow in Git. This workflow assumes you are working on your local repo. And have a remote repo to which you will push changes. It can be 
GitHub, but it will work with the same other remote repos. It assumes you've already cloned the repo. Yeah, so this is all you need, in my opinion. This is the pretty much all you'll ever need to do in uh, Git. But let's continue reading here. This is one of the more basic flows through the system. There are many, many ways to use Git, and you've just scratched the surface with this tutorial. If you use Vim or Subline as your editor, you might want to check out these tutorials, which will show you how to get plugins to integrate Git into your editor. So I don't use GIM or or Subline really. Um, huh. I mean, maybe I might want to. Yeah, I don't know. And actually, a lot of the times I use Vi, but I think I think on some systems that I use, Vi just opens Vim. I mean, they're I think they're like pretty similar. It's almost like the difference between Microsoft Word two thousand seven and two thousand nine or whatever. Like they're the same thing. If you'd like to take a deeper dive into Git, I recommend these books, uh, ProGit. Yep, there have been lots of uh, links to that. Um, uh, for those of you who like to read on paper, there's a print version of ProGit, and I found O'Reilly's version control with Git to be useful. Okay, so that's the end of this diversion. Um, yeah, I, I would say um, I would say this is a good tutorial. If you're trying to learn uh, Git for the first time, um, especially uh, for this workflow, this is really important. Um, you know, just write this down in your files somewhere uh, on the job. You know, basically knowing nothing about Git, if you can just learn how to get comfortable with this workflow and start using version control where you weren't using it, um, it it'll be revolutionary and it'll really. Uh, help you uh, work smarter, faster, uh, and then and then be able to collaborate a lot easier. You can get coworkers involved, even even coworkers who don't know how to to code. They can, uh, you know, they can make changes to what you're working on without you uh, being uh, disrupted by that or without things going wrong. Uh, especially if they like make a new branch, but even even if they don't like uh, this, this is um, this is really good. Um, the other thing I'd recommend anyone watching this who's who's like a total beginner uh, do go through one of these. Uh, for me, I've got my uh, way I do it and my habits, and, and they're not uh, perfect, but they're kind of. Uh, you know, I'm at, I'm at the point where like they're good enough and they allow me to like do what I want to do. So like if you're new to this and getting into it, like build a build a good foundation, you know, build a perfect foundation, go through one of these and, and get yourself set up to uh, uh, to be able to be more effective uh, the more you learn. Uh, for me, um, yeah, it probably would help me to do something like this, but um, I, I, for me to like switch on the job or something, it's, it's kind of too late and it wouldn't be a huge benefit, but if you're, you're brand new and you don't have to, um, kind of, uh, you don't have to factor in, you know, how much lost time or, you know, having it confuse me, like, what's that going to do for me? Uh, you know, start off with, with this solid foundation and, and, uh, eventually you'll be able to build up something even better on top of that. 
All right, so that's it for uh, for this. I'm going to do another video right away after a, a quick break. Um, so I'll be jumping back into this uh, here. Um, yeah, so we, we went, did the introduction to Git and, and GitHub. So we're going to be go back back to the uh, part one project setup of the learning path and the deploying the application to Heroku uh, section. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you uh, shortly in a few minutes uh, for my second lunch lunchtime video when I get back to the original uh, learning path.